Hey there, everybody. It's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. This is, of course, the first video of 2020. Welcome to the new year. Welcome to the new decade. And we're going to kick things off with a video that I've been wanting to do for a while about um, comparing uh, different ways of using lines. Uh, that is to say, um, anytime you do an illustration and you decide to ink it or add lines to it, you've kind of got a choice between um, adding... Uh, some lines in some places, or adding lines everywhere, basically, or indeed deciding not to have lines of any kind. And that's really what I'm going to be comparing, is three different levels there uh, in terms of uh, the degree to which you choose to uh, put lines uh, into your illustration, especially if you uh, decide to work the way I'm working today, which is to say putting color down first, and then um, leaving it until later to decide which which one of these requires lines uh, compared to which could just be left as uh, an area of color. Now of course there's a little bit of line work here you can see in pencil so to say that this first illustration is going to be a hundred percent lineless is um, not entirely accurate but it should, should still provide a, uh, an interesting point of comparison. So what I'm going to do is uh, continue with watercolor um, possibly a little white gouache. You know I love my white gouache. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish up all the coloring of this illustration of a sort of ice skater out on a lake. And I'm going to scan this into my computer and replicate it two more times, print that out, and then we'll see what happens uh, when you decide to add lines <clears throat> all over the whole illustration versus uh, just in certain areas. So let's go ahead and kick it into time lapse. Bring in old man time lapse for the first time in the new decade. <laughs> I feel so young! I'm ready to lapse that time. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and finish this all off, and we'll be right back. Well, I don't know if this really looks like a finished illustration at this stage. Maybe a slightly impressionistic one. I'm trying to tighten things up a little. Cheating a bit by adding a little uh, green colored pencil here to make these reflections a little more similar to what they're supposed to be reflections of. But what I really want to do is move on to the next part where I scan this in, print it out, and then we'll have um, three sort of identical versions and uh, you'll see me use two different approaches in terms of adding uh, lines in version 2 and 3. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so I've got uh, the three different images side by side now, enlarged it just a little bit to make it easier for me to ink. And what I'm going to do with this one is almost on purpose, I'm going to do something that I would never do normally, and that is to use a, a fairly similar line width all the way through the entire uh, illustration. Um, and later on I'll explain why it's fairly rare uh, for me to do this. But uh, really, uh, at this stage, I want as a point of comparison to see what happens when you add lines everywhere that you could add lines. Um, to me, I would call it something like the uh, the coloring book approach. You know, when you uh, look at a coloring book, uh, almost everything has a line around it so as to help you understand what needs uh, color. And it, it produces a certain type of look. Already, I think, almost instinctively, I am not maintaining that thickness of line. Um, and some of the lines are going to be a little thinner than others. But in any case, you get the basic idea that I'm going to go through here and almost in an automatic way put a line around every single shape. And um, I fear that this could be incredibly boring to watch in real time. So you guessed it, we're bringing in old man time lapse already. What do you mean already? You're making it sound like it's too soon. Uh, and he is going to help me speed through this process. We're going to put lines around absolutely every part of the drawing uh, that I could, that I can really think of. Uh, and then we're going to move on to this final one where we're going to be a little more selective about where the lines go. All 
right, so already we can compare between um, uh, the two versions that we have right here with the, you know, as I said, non-linear, although there's, you know, hints of little pencil lines in there. Basically, you're looking at something that's dominated by just color, whereas here you've got uh, lines dropped uh, onto the entire illustration. And what I want to do now, probably using a little more uh, real time, is talk about how um, artists adding lines to illustrations um, will, will often become selective in terms of what uh, gets a line and what doesn't. And um, you can probably guess that I deliberately created this illustration with this idea of the reflections uh, on the surface of the ice being something that um, many illustrators would choose not to put lines around because uh, if you think about it, it's just a reflection. It, uh, it's not really there. It's just something that um, seems to be there. Um, that is to say, there are no trees down here in this part of the drawing, but there are trees up here, and I might choose to very lightly uh, get a little bit of line work in here on these trees. And there's almost a psychological aspect to what you're doing with these lines. You're, you're sort of conveying to the viewer, um, by putting the lines on these trees, you're saying, yes, these are real trees, these are really here, uh, compared to these reflections. Um, but also I think there's just a sense of wanting uh, to downplay the reflections a little bit and not have them have equal weight to everything else in the drawing, uh, just to get a kind of a cool effect, because when you see reflections on a frozen lake or whatever, they are rarely absolute mirror-like reflections uh, of the real world. Um, you know, they sort of shimmer a little, I suppose, depending if there's a, like shards of ice uh, or snow across the uh, surface. They might be a little paler anyway in real life, so you could just argue that it's a depiction of real life, you know, a more accurate depiction of what we see uh, in real life. But the nice thing about comparing these three in, in the end is we're going to be able to see what does, you know, we can still look back and see how, how do we feel about it with no lines, which uh, some people would say, well, that's more accurate to real life. You don't see lines around the edge of a tree in real life, you just see these uh, colors, you know that form the... Now you can see already that in this area where I really put a good hard line around that tree, I'm being a little more, uh, you know, making thinner lines, I'm sort of breaking the line up, I'm not being quite so um, devoted to outlining every single part of it. That's because I want these to drop back, I want these trees to feel a little farther away. Now, um, I'm going to finish uh, drawing the rest of the skater there, but let's say we've got this fence here in the foreground and I want this really to feel closer to us, I might really lay into my lines in this section in a way that I didn't on the trees a moment ago, so as to really make this kind of pop forward, this um, wooden fence. But I'm still going to be selective about what gets a line and what doesn't. You know, one thing I could have done, I suppose, on this one is to add lines that are even like texture lines. You know, that's uh, when I talked about adding lines absolutely everywhere I could. Certainly we could add uh, lines to the surface of this wood. Well, I'm definitely not going to do that here because I'm I'm trying to show what happens when you pick and choose and you, you put lines. Sometimes you put lines, sometimes you don't. And I've been saying this for years, that my, part of my philosophy of, of very often working with the color first and adding the lines second is it allows me this moment to make a decision. Do, should I add a line? Do I need to add a line? Like right here, let's say, this is this is not the um, either the left or right hand edge of the object. I would probably choose to sort of get a light little bit of maybe a, a slightly broken line right there. Uh, and I just like having that option uh, of choosing you know, deciding whether something is worthy of a line. <laughs> or, you know, what kind of an effect will I get if there is no line? Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and finish. I think we probably will end up just doing this whole part of it in real time. Sorry, old man time-lapse. You better be sorry. Locking me out of the room. 
Uh, but I really wanted to see, even for myself, what does it look like when you uh, do lines around um, these real life objects in the upper section of the illustration and don't add any lines to the reflections that are on the surface of the lake, do you indeed get a, uh, an interesting effect where those reflections come across as reflections rather than actual upside down trees or whatever. And I do think you uh, get that kind of effect. There's kind of a blur to that section of the illustration. Now as for this distant mountain, I might choose not to put any lines at all. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave that without any lines. And that is, again, uh, uh, an effect of pushing that back. You know, when you put a line around something, you kind of bring it forward. Uh, when you leave a line off of it, it seems farther away. And uh, that maybe brings us to the end of this little lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. I didn't mean to have everyone try to do this identical illustration, but to kind of get the principle uh, across that you could apply to your own work, even, you know, digital work, uh, deciding uh, where do the lines go and where do I leave them out. So hang on a second. I'm going to go ahead and grab my books so that I can say thank you to anyone who supported me by getting any of them, like the drawing lesson, my graphic novel that teaches you how to draw, the Two Pencil Method, my latest book, a book that shows you how to make uh, drawings with just two ordinary pencils, and finally, Mastering Manga, my book on how to draw using a manga style. I really cannot say thank you enough to those of you who choose to support me by picking up any of those books or by subscribing, watching the videos, leaving comments, and so forth. But I think it is time for me to lay down this pen. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon. <laughs>